Hi, I'm Ursula with Tipsy Totes and this is my partner and mine, Sonia. And we're super excited here at Grape Expectations today because we're starting our very own wine making process. Um, today is the first step, we're actually crushing the grapes. I don't know what that entails yet, but I'm sure they'll tell us. I think you'll enjoy today. Everything is in here right now except for the Petite Bordeaux. They didn't come on the truck. They're going to be here Monday morning. So we're going to crush that last crate for you on Monday morning and put it in there. It's not going to affect anything because the fermentation process doesn't start till tonight. So it's going to be 36 hours later it's going to be added. So we'll add that for you next week. And is this your first time with us? Okay, I want to welcome you guys to Grape Expectation. I'm Fireman Steve. This is Garney. We're going to be helping you crush the grapes today. You've got 750 six pounds of grapes here. 21 containers, they weigh 36 pounds each. Only reason I bring up the weight, you want to work in tandem because they're very heavy and you don't want to spill the grapes on the floor. This is the Crusher Destemmer. That's what we're doing today. It's not like the old I Love Lucy show. You don't have to take off your feet and stomp on them. This machine does it for you. You guys are going to pour the grapes in here. Stems are going to come out this side. Everything else, the juice, the, the skins, the grapes are going to go down that hose into the tub. It's going to make 53 gallons of wine. It's going to fill this up about two-thirds of the way. Next week, you guys, we're going to come for the pressing. That's when it goes out of the tub into the barrel, where it's going to be for about the next nine months. When we leave here in about 15 minutes, you're going to go over to the wine tower. The professor is going to add a few chemicals to it, a little yeast. He's going to start the fermentation process. And then we recommend drinking heavily between here and there because it's a chemistry lesson. So if you guys want to take a glass of wine with you over there, or if you need some wine, we can open a bottle for you. It's not a problem. So when you start this process, Garney's going to help you guys break down the crates. When you pour the grapes in here, just don't reach your finger into the machine. You want red wine, but you don't want really red wine. You could lose a finger in here. You don't want to do that. And in case they haven't warned you yet, or not warned you, but cautioned you, when you take this wine home next June, don't drink it all right off the bat. You have to show some self-restraint. It's very young wine. It's most commercial wineries keep it in the barrel for a year and the bottle for an additional year before they release it to the public. So when you go to Total Wines, you're taking home a two-year-old bottle of wine. This is a nine-month-old. So there's a big difference between a nine-month-old and a two-year-old if you ever had kids. So we always say don't open until Christmas. It gets better as time goes on. The prime for this, this wine is three to five years. No one's ever actually made it three to five years, so that's still an urban legend, but um, it, it does get, uh, yeah, especially with this blend. I, I made this exact blend in 2011. Yeah. This is our Bordeaux blend. It's very famous. Is it good? Uh, yes, I had a bottle. Tuesday night, I, and I hadn't had one for about a year. Amazing! I'm not kidding. It was real. I'm like, I didn't. Even, I couldn't believe it was ours for a minute. It was very, very good. So this will change. And that was that was 2011. It's three year three years old right now. Completely different than it was a year ago. So especially with this, keep it. You're gonna thank me. It's really, really good stuff. This is a great blend. And like I said, we will add the petite Bordeaux on Monday, so you don't have to worry about that. Next week, don't look this nice. You're gonna get messy. If you got some friends you can bring with you because it's a lot more labor intensive, obviously we'll be here to help you, you know. But don't dress nice, don't wear white because you're gonna get, you will get dirty next week, okay? And so if there's no questions about this, we're gonna fire it up. What, what and, grapes are we looking at? Here? Oh, okay, this is on the top here, they're marked here. These are the Cabernets. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, Cabernet, Cabernet, the Cabernet Franc are down here. Merlots are on this side. You're going to notice the different color in the Cabernet Franc. It's almost like a lavender color. It's a much lighter grape. So I'll, I'll try to point it out to you when you guys get down there. These are very dark purple. Those those are almost lavender in color. That's sweet. Okay, they're all sweet. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're all going to be sweet oh, okay. at this point. In oh, fact, okay. at the end, when we have the 53 gallons of mush there, okay. dip your finger in there, taste it. It's like the best grape juice you ever had. It's very sweet, and it will not be like that next week. It's going to be very young, immature wine. We all make mistakes in our youth, right? So I'm going to fire this thing up. We just start dumping it. Yeah, yeah.
<laughs> so the grapes fall through here. This shaft spins. It's got all these propellers inside there. This all spins really fast. The grapes get crushed by these propellers in here. The stems get tangled up in here. They get pushed out this side. That's why you saw the stems going out. Then there's an auger at the bottom. Looks like a long corkscrew. That spins, pushes all the grapes, skins, juice forward into the pump, goes into the hose, down into the tub. I'm gonna fire this back up, get you guys a few more bottles of wine, and I'm gonna drain the hose in there. Retired firefighters, just for this right here. That's the only reason I got my job. Just a little bit more there. What we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna have you put your finger in there, and I'm gonna have you taste this. It's delicious. Is that great? Yes. It's the best tasting grape juice you're ever gonna have. This is not Welch's grape juice. This is not. This is this is delicious. Right, put Welch your finger wish, in there. Yeah. Welch probably wishes they had They wish like they it. had. They wish they could afford it. That's more James James. <laughs> this is very expensive and very delicious grape juice. That's really good. We're going to taste it now before we inoculate it. So we're going to inoculate it in a minute. So, now, when this wine, when this is on that side of the uh, winery, we call it a mess. When you come to the philosophical and intelligence part of the winery, we call it must. And that's a wine term. So this, until it is turned into wine, is called must. So anytime you hear the word must, it's a new wine term that you should need to know. M-U-S-T. M-U-S-T. Bricks, B-R-I-X, is what you watched me over there with the refractometer. Check, so you got must and you have bricks. So, we're going to inoculate the must. Inoculation means, another wine term, means we're going to pitch some yeast in here. Now our yeast is very, very strong. It comes from the south of France, from the Bordeaux region, also from the uh, Rhone Valley, and some comes from Italy. It, the reason why we use that yeast is because it's stronger than any parasitic yeast that you brought in on your earlobes, your eyelashes, your hair, anything that's in this room, or anything that is on those skins right now from the vineyards. Because without, without adding any yeast and any nutrients, given enough time and enough heat, fermentation would start on its own, but it might take five weeks. We got a one-week model, just like every other winery in the world. We have 3,000 plus people to put through here. So we use very strong yeast and we add some nutrients. We're going to add some thiamine and some vitamins and some amino acids and uh, some diammonium phosphate. And we call that Viagra. Viagra for the yeast to give it energy so that we can produce wine quickly within that one week period. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that, that we do and it's a little bit of the chemistry but there's no test and you don't have to remember any of this, okay? But every single grape contains the following items. Glucose, fructose, lactic acid, malic acid, water, some amino acids, some pigeon droppings, any kind of things that flew over the vineyard. Every single grape, every one of those contains these items, okay? I'm going to show you some formulae that are associated with that. Again, you don't have to remember it. I just want you to see the recurrence of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the winemaking process, which is similar to the building blocks of life, okay? Here's one of the acids, of the sugars, actually. This is glucose. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and certain molecular combination, which you don't have to remember. Here's one of the acids, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and on and on through the process, okay? Anybody remember what this was for basic chemistry? That's basic hydrogen. science? Just hydrogen. Hydrogen, very good. And? Water. Water, Water. cool. That's and the only one I'll tell you, I don't know. Uh, how about this one? Potassium. Potassium, right. Oh. And how about this one? 
Potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, which is a salt. Now, I show you that because we have potassium metabisulfite, which we use as a cleaning agent around here, and a sanitizing agent, and it's also a preservative that helps the wine last for a long period of time without turning into vinegar. So, we got some bags around here with K's on it. So, people say, KJ, what's that? Okay, here's another one. If you think outside the box, K9P, dog pee. Well, you gotta have some fun with this, you know what I mean? How about this one? Sodium. Sodium. And? Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, which is nothing more than table salt. And this one's a tough one because it's a radical. Banana. B A N A N A. We would, I should have got that one. I should have got that one. I should have got that one. <laughs> We fool a lot of the chemists and a lot of our chemical professors that come through here. My chemistry professor years ago pulled both K9P and banana on me. I never forgot it many, many years ago. <laughs> Hydrogen sulfide. Part of the chemistry, nothing you can do about it. It is going to produce hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. So we have to mitigate that by adding diammonium phosphate. Remember I said ammonium smells like ammonia. Well, part of the protocol was you used to mix up the diammonium phosphate, and it was making people nauseous. So what I do now is I make myself nauseous the following day, and I mix it up and pitch it in there to mitigate the hydrogen sulfide. SO2, sulfur dioxide. Without it, we don't have an industry. So we use that potassium metabisulfite to produce some sulfur dioxide to preserve the wine. So only, uh, just because a bottle of wine says contain uh, uh, no sulfites added doesn't mean there's no sulfites in it. This means they didn't add any. Part of the chemistry. Carbon dioxide. Part of the chemistry is we're going to produce carbon dioxide. And that forces the skins to the surface. But if you pinch those grapes over there, you would see that the juice is clear. Well, if the juice is clear, how does red wine get its color if the skins are on the surface? Well, that's where you come in during the week of fermentation and you use the plunger and you'll actually, you'll actually plunge it down, okay? And we'll do that four or five times a day. You don't have to do it, but it will be done four or five times a day. The thing is, you don't want to jam it to the bottom and split the seeds out. It causes bitterness. You've got to be very gentle with it because it's a love affair. This is romance. You have to be nice to the wine, okay? So during the week, we'll do it in the morning, I'll do it in the evening, but if you get a chance to come over and do it, and do a whole row, because every recipe is different, you'll see the different characteristics of the different grapes. We're the only winery in the world that lets you do that. <laughs> and we'll show you this you know, tomorrow and the next day if you're over here, the right way to plunge if you come over, okay? Now I talked about yeast. Yeast is nothing more than fungi, fun guys, fun girls getting together, having some fun. With mushrooms, because mushrooms is fun guy, fun dude. I remember in the old days, we used to do a lot of things with mushrooms. Now, I sauteed them in olive oil, shallots, little lemon pepper, little garlic. I don't know what you guys do, but that's what I do. But we're making, after all, ethyl alcohol. Again, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and certain molecular combination. You can't burn this in your car. So you can see that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, winemaking, and building blocks of life, therefore, wine and life go together, like mom and apple pie. Good. What we're going to do now is, with your help, you are going to pitch the yeast. I've prehydrated the yeast, which is part of our protocols now, at UC Davis, University of California Davis, at the Enology Department, and the Mondavi Institute. That's what they recommend we do. So do our labs. Prehydrate, that's what we do now. So, with your help, I'm going to need Julie to come forward and place this, some energy, nutrients, and some amino acids, and some vitamin B1, 5, 8, 12, whatever else, the Viagra, as we call it. Go ahead and throw it in and stir it up a little at a time until it's all done. Okay? Go ahead and let you do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The same thing here? Stir yeah. it up? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm finally doing something. Yeah. Give it a good brisk whisk, you don't want any lumps.
good. No, that's good. good. Okay, I'm going to need one more assistant, sir. Now, you, you're the emergency. This is chemistry after all. Right. And we don't want any explosions, so. Yeah, I, I remember very well. Yeah. Okay, now if you grab this one, sir. Okay. On over here. And you should come here, my dear. Yep, bring that. And then you come around, please. Okay. You stand right there. In case there's an explosion, please the emergency. Now what I want you two to do is to pour into the middle. I want you I want the fluids to mix. Oh to mix. Okay. Yeah, okay. right in the middle. So, just don't right? just don't crush the uh yeah, good. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Good job. Go on More fast? Or? Yeah, it's all right. As long as we get it all in and they mix it up. Okay. Alright, good job. Oh, good. Go ahead and put your scoop it in there. Okay, rinse it out. And just throw it on. Okay, good. Okay, now go ahead and put them in that back over there, please. There was no explosion, so we were lucky. Yeah, we were really lucky. We just happened before. Now what I want you to do is to go ahead and go all the way around and finish up right in the middle. Okay, please. <laughs> Good, good. Finish up in the middle. Great. Okay. Now, go ahead and put that down. Oh! Boy, great. Now, what we used to do is start mixing this up right away. But again, UC Davis and our lab say, let things lie. Let, if, if you let nature take its course, you'll have a more vigorous fermentation. If you look through a microscope right now, you'd see a lot of activity, like a microbiology. Yeah, it's attacking that sugar. Okay. It wants it with yeah, the help. Yeah, sure. With the help of the yeast and the nutrients. So we're gonna. A lot of those organisms are trying to have orgasms right now. I mean, it's going and having fun. So we're gonna let the honeymoon continue overnight, and tomorrow we'll start the bunching process. Okay. So I'm gonna put a uh, put the thing back on it. Then, I'm going to put a little sign on it to keep the uh, room service people away. Do not plunge because there's a honeymoon in progress. We're going to turn down the lights and we're going to play some music. And then tomorrow we'll start all the oh, yes. yes. so, Now, if remember what I said, take a picture of this so you remember what your combination was. Your percentage. Remember, you just multiply any one of these numbers, like the Petit Verdot, by five, and you get five percent Petit Verdot, ten percent, forty percent, and the rest is cap. Okay? And for your label, and the percentage of alcohol by volume. Okay? So just look at any label on the wall in it that has all that. We'll see. So next week it's a little dirtier now. It's gonna get a little messier. We're gonna go into the barrel through the press. And uh, we're not going to have a lot of fun with that. So wear something you don't mind getting a little uh, stained, kind of like me, you know. But thank you for your attention. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good time during the week. And if you have questions, I'll answer them as often as you will. Okay, so the next step of the process is called pressing. So you just crush your grapes, and right now there's skins and seeds in there mixed in. It's really thick. Um, what will happen through fermentation is those skins will start to separate. So when you come back next week for the pressing, what we're going to do is we're going to pump as much free flow wine directly into the barrel as we can. From there, we're going to scoop all of the must into the press and squeeze the rest of it out. So the answer is no, all of that wouldn't fit into there. Um, but by next week, once it starts to separate and you press it out, it'll be just enough to fill one of these 200 liter barrels of wine. So, and that'll be next week. Thank you for watching. This has been Tipsy Totes. If you want to see the next installment, we'll be back next week with the second process in our whole barrel of wine. And we're also going to start a competition. Make sure you leave comments below because we're going to pick five lucky winners and we're going to send you a bottle of wine absolutely free. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and subscribe to our channel. Cheers! Thumbs up!